Hi there again booktube, Lola here and welcome back to Lola's Library. Um, today I'm doing my part two and final review of Illumine, so welcome back to my book talk on Illumine. Last time I was speaking to you I was finished on, a hun on page 183 and then from there I basically just read the rest of the book. I could not put this down when I got to the 200 mark so I just read it in one sitting, sitting after that. So it took me about three settings to read the entire thing. The first two settings were the first 183 pages and then the rest of it up to page 599 I kind of read all in one setting on the same day. So um, let's get on to that shall we? So I'll go bit by bit through the book chronologically from where I left off. And so when I was last speaking to you, I was at the point where the main characters Ezra and Katie were trying to get information about what was going on in this bit, this war um, on the different ships, why there was a disease getting out and they didn't really know much about anything. So then I went on a little bit and then like they found out a lot about how the ships are working and what's going on and that the Lincoln is following them because the Lincoln wants to attack and destroy their, their ships, um, starting with the Alexander. With the Alexander they, they want to start with them because they're the strongest so if, if the Lincoln gets to the Alexander first then the other two ships will be easier to take out. Byron, I think his name is, who Katie speaks to a lot about the intelligence of the ships and all that kind of stuff and the ideas that he can come up with to stop what's going on. He's found out that he can maybe use a new kind of virus to send to the ship. The, the same kind of virus that sent the um, AI, the artificial intelligence called Aiden, crazy. Um, the reason they've t turned Aiden off is because he's a crazy artificial intelligence system, he's gone a bit mental, he doesn't follow orders the way he should. So he's been turned off and they want to basically create another virus. They call it a logic bomb. They want to send that to the Lincoln and make their system dumb as well and crazy and insane and not able to protect them so that they can win and get away to safety. And then around page 263, that's when Aiden finally starts back up. Um, and Aiden is an absolutely amazing artificial intelligence character. I was quite skeptical going into this book because I don't normally like um, sci-fi novels or even sci-fi on the TV. But this is absolutely wonderful and the artificial intelligence in this is, is wonderful. You see certain emotions and certain feelings and certain ideas coming from Aiden that you wouldn't see elsewhere, that you don't really see anywhere else. It's something that's quite new in and of itself. Um, you keep getting messages like error uh, because the AI is feeling things it shouldn't. Uh, so there's errors coming up left, right and centre. And then you get like full pages that just say his name. It's like he's trying to remind himself of who he is and where he comes from and why he's feeling the things that he feels. He doesn't know what he is, he doesn't know who he is. His only mission is to protect the people that he was created to protect and he's questioning that and and trying to protect them but in a very dislogical sense. He's gone in a way where human emotions are not involved and that killing a lot of them would save the rest and that's not what the people want because families are being split up and killed and that kind of stuff. And then you get like arguing sequences between Aiden and the Commander Torrance who is the general of the, the ship and he he basically argues with her all the time and well with Aiden all the time and um, they, they're under a lot of disagreement because obviously Torrance has a lot of ideas about feelings and being able to save people whereas Aiden just does not want that. Aiden just wants to protect the people that he can protect. The book gets mega interesting as soon as you hit the um, point where Aiden comes into it and does all these very strange kind of pages. If you look at that, that's how you have to read it. That's all sentences in like star constellation systems. And like the main the main thing you see with the AR is that he's very poetic. He comes up with loads of poems and it's got a very beautiful way of speaking. He's he's very willing to help the people, but like 
he doesn't he overrides commands when they're given to him if he believes that he's not gonna be able to save or protect his people with with that command. He's very curious, he's very envious of certain characters and all panic breaks out in the Alexander because he's taken over and he starts releasing the people who have this virus that if it's like an airborne virus. So if somebody catches it they will also turn into this zombie type person who doesn't know what they're doing, they'll just attack. But with these they're not exactly zombies because they kind of know what they're doing and towards the end of the book it gets kind of creepy in a way of comes after Katie comes after Katie and he's he's saying um things like like the the zombie type people are saying my little birdie come to me I'm I'm coming for you birdie and stuff like that. It's, it's really really creepy the way the way um these virus people are portrayed and how how they come across to the reader. I've also heard about the audiobook. I didn't know about how the audiobook was presented until recently. So at some point I will be getting the audiobook and listening to it just because I, I've heard that there's so many different voice actors and sound effects and, and it creeps you out more than maybe it would in your head. So I can't wait to read that or listen to that at some point. And then there's a whole section as well where Aiden's saying loads of things about how he's going to protect the fleet um, and he keeps saying things like am I not merciful and that's like his line in that section of the text he keeps saying I am, am I not merciful and there is like a page where he just says that on its own if you can see that's it just says am I not merciful the question mark and basically this means that he thinks he has these feelings um, of mercy towards the fleet and he's got his own like, warped logic around the idea of mercy. And as I said before, the captain has this argument with Aiden about letting the people of the Alexander go uh, because we're in a lot of danger from the Lincoln and the Aiden isn't really protecting the fleet very well. So there's like a negotiation with Aiden to let them leave, but he won't let them. And then there's like sections where People are trying to leave messages behind to their loved ones because they know they're going to die under Aiden's protection. And this is how what's so amazing about the story. There's this artificial intelligence and it, it shows how this system, this idea could, could make something have its own mind. But it's a very warped logic so the ideas that we would come up with, the artificial intelligence wouldn't. It would be a very warped logic, it would probably kill thousands upon thousands of people like like in this book and it just shows that artificial intelligence is quite a bad idea. <laughs> um, but it's very very interesting reading about the kind of things that they could possibly do. And then Katie does end up going to the Alexander from, from the ship that she's on, the Copernicus. And um, because she thinks that Ezra her boyfriend is talking to her through through the tech and through instant messenger and stuff. And then you find out that Aiden is the one who's speaking to her, pretending to be Ezra. And she finds out that Ezra's dead and you're just like, what? What is going on? How can Ezra be dead? And why, why are you being like this with Aiden? He, Aiden hacks into Ezra's account after Ezra dies in this, in this terrible accident uh, under Aiden's rain I suppose of the ship um, and starts speaking to Katie as Ezra and he tells her that he loves her and that, that he's um, with her and that he's waiting for her and that he'll help her in any way shape or form um, but actually like it's Aiden picking up on the way Ezra has always spoken to Katie and using that to get her there and it is actually like in a way it's like Aiden actually loves Katie and is very jealous of Ezra's relationship with her and he makes Katie stop with him um, to the end. But then you start seeing Aiden develop all this emotion and this this warped idea of love for Katie and you it's just a wonderful ending where um, where Aiden finally decides that he wants to he wants Katie to be alive he doesn't want Katie to die along with him and he tells Katie actually that if there is even a seed 
of information left of Aiden, he could come back eventually. There's this new technology and he'll grow again. So Aiden survives on her tablet, I think, like a little tablet she's carrying around, portable device, as they call it. Um, and Katie gets away on a on a pod to get back to the other ship and she finally makes it. She's got a hell of a lot of radiation in her, um, which is slowly killing her because the Lincoln has destroyed the Alexander and it blasted her like crazy. She manages to get off the Alexander without the disease and has treatment for the radiation. And then, wonderfully, you find out that Ezra is alive and well and it's so good and I love that they finally, finally get to see each other. I'm going to show you this page because it's really beautiful. Alright, so when Katie and Ezra finally see each other again, you get this beautiful page where it just says together, all in text, like every single word is together. And they're finally together again. Um, Katie is better and Ezra's finally got to see her. And I love it. And I love the very, very end of this book where um, Katie is speaking to Ezra's mother <laughs> and saying basically that you're never going to see your son because you were horrible to him, you abandoned him while he was growing up. You were not a good mother and I'm coming for you, I'm going to get you and I know that you're behind this this war, this these thousands and thousands of deaths and you will get your comeuppance. So I am really looking forward to reading Gemini and I, I just love certain parts of this book, especially when Aiden was speaking. And I love the bits where you just get like pictures in text and in numbers and stuff and poetic way that Aiden speaks. Um, but I, I really look forward to trying to listen to this in audio book at some point as well. I can't wait to read Gemini and I'm so glad I finished this and that I gave it a chance because if I hadn't I don't know where my life would be and this is just such an amazing book. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars only because the first part of the book was very difficult to get into. You had to keep reading and trying to get into it until like something big happened. Um, and it's only like at the 200 page-ish mark where Aiden starts coming into it that it gets really, really, really interesting. But it was a mind-blowing, fantastic book. It, it'll take you for a proper ride, seriously. Um, pick this up if you ever get the chance. I loved it and thank you so much for watching another video. I will see you all soon with another video and I'm at home now, so bye!